Hello everyone! In this video I want to show you a very unusual substance, which is often called dry water. The reason why I didn't shoot this video earlier is because nowadays it's quite challenging to buy this substance. That is why I managed to buy 2 liters of this liquid only through my acquaintances. Besides being so hard to get, this substance is also quite expensive. A 2 liter bottle cost me $120. In reality, this so called dry water also has a more scientific name, which is Novak. This fluid was created by the 3M company in the 1990s as a refrigerant to substitute freons, which deplete the ozone layer. Molecules of this fluid are similar to ethyl isopropyl ketone, where all 12 atoms of hydrogen are substituted by fluorine atoms. As a result of such a substitution, reaction properties of the new chemical turn out to be nothing like what people had known before. Today, there exist several types of fluids bearing the name Novak with different boiling points and densities. I have got in the bottle Novak 449. As soon as I took this bottle with my hand, I immediately felt how heavy it was. The density of dry water is about 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. That is why 2 liters of such fluid can be used as a dumbbell. When pouring it into an evaporation bowl, I immediately noticed an unusual sound when the fluid was being poured. Because of its extremely low viscosity, which is 2 times smaller than that of water, it pours even better than alcohol. That is why the wettability of this fluid differs greatly from that of regular water, and this can be demonstrated with an experiment. If we submerge one napkin in dry water and another one in regular water, we will see that the napkin submerged in regular water quickly becomes soggy, and the one submerged in dry water doesn't get soggy at all. Excess liquid drips out, leaving thin fibers undamaged. That is why this fluid was called dry water, because it seems not to wet anything, although in reality it just easily and unobstructably drips out of the napkin's small pores. Besides, the boiling temperature of this liquid is just 49 degrees Celsius, which is why you can easily dip your hand into this boiling fluid and not get burned. Also, after running the experiments, I noticed that the dry water was evaporating off my fingers almost immediately. When I was just dripping this fluid onto the palm of my hand, it disappeared in seconds, not leaving any traces on my hand. This is yet another peculiarity of dry water, which is the extreme volatility of this substance. Besides of having this property, dry water disappears extremely quickly, even if you spill it on the table. In half a minute, there will be no trace left. If we take regular water and dry water and compare how quickly they evaporate, we will see that the dry water instantly evaporated off my left finger, whereas the other finger is still wet. If I cover boiling dry water with a glass filled with ice water, we will see how much vapor leaves the boiling fluid and condenses on the bottom of the cool glass. If I hadn't covered the boiling dry water, about 300 ml of this fluid would have evaporated in about 10 minutes. Not only does the water quickly evaporate, but it also doesn't have a smell. However, it is not advisable to inhale its vapor. When exposed to the ultraviolet light and moisture in the air, this fluid can split into hydrogen fluoride and other unpleasant chemicals. The released vapor of dry water is extremely heavy and easily fills up the vessel. I'm wondering if this substance will burn. As we can see, it hasn't. That's not surprising, as the fluorination level is very high. That is why carbon atoms in the molecules of dry water cannot be oxidized 
and it's hard to make this fluid react with other substances. If we compare regular water with dry water, we can see how vapor of regular water almost doesn't affect the flame, in contrast to the later vapor. Besides, because dry water molecules are quite heavy, its vapor weighs several times the weight of air. Even the smoke coming from the blown out match floats above the vapor, creating a real cloud. It looks very beautiful. If we pour out the heavy vapor of dry water from the glass onto the burning candles, they'll immediately blow out, because oxygen will be pushed away from the candle flame. If we just pour this fluid into the middle of burning candles, nothing will change, because the releasing vapor is so heavy that it immediately starts flowing down from the table not reaching the top of even such small candles. Because vapor of this fluid is so heavy and inert, nowadays dry water is frequently used for extinguishing fire in offices and especially in data centers, because dry water instantly evaporates and easily pushes oxygen out of the room, preventing fire from spreading. When dry water evaporates, it actively absorbs the heat around it, speeding up the extinguishing process. Besides having a low reactivity, fluidity and volatility, dry water also almost completely doesn't react with any other chemicals. For example, if you write something onto two sheets of papers with a marker pen and submerge one in regular water and the other one in dry water, you will clearly see a difference. Regular water easily dissolves the marker pen dye, whereas the dry water doesn't affect the dye. The same happens to a tea bag, which doesn't breathe in boiling dry water. This fluid cannot dissolve the agents contained in a small ground tea leaves. In regular water, however, tea breathes very quickly. If we try to mix regular water with dry water, we don't manage to do that, because they can hardly dissolve each other. We can easily dye the top layer with food coloring, whereas the bottom layer just won't get dyed, because dry water is one of the worst solvent. However, after stirring for a long time, I managed a slightly dye the dry water layer with food coloring. It's very easy to separate these two layers with the help of a syringe and small vestiges of regular water can be mopped by cotton pad. Because of its extreme fluidity, dry water just drip back whereas regular water stays trapped in between cotton pad fibers. Dry water doesn't mix with regular water, but will it mix with alcohol? I'm pouring some alcohol into the colored dry water and stirring the two liquids. At first they seem to get mixed, but then they separated and seemed to swap their places. In reality through, since alcohol dissolves food coloring much better than dry water, dye from the bottom layer floated to the top layer, creating such an interesting effect. Since dry water is a bad solvent, it doesn't react with other materials either. For instance, it doesn't react with rubber. For my next experiment, I inflated two balloons and after that, I dropped some dry water on one of them. As we can see, nothing is happening. What will happen if I pour some white spirit on the other balloon? It immediately bursts because white spirit dissolves rubber very well, whereas dry water doesn't react with it. For my last experiment, I decided to see what will happen to a smartphone if I submerge it in this liquid? It's an old Nexus 5, which is not water resistant. As we can see, when I pour dry water into the glass with the smartphone, almost nothing is happening. The smartphone continues to work well, because dry water 
is an excellent dielectric which doesn't short circuit the contacts of the circuit board inside the smartphone. After taking a bath in such dry water, a lot of liquid ran into the smartphone and in some time there began to appear some dark spots on the screen. Probably the dry water got into the screen, slightly having changed the polarization of light. However, a couple of days later, the screen was back to normal. Apparently, all the dry water evaporated and the screen started working normally again. It was also interesting for me to check how effectively dry water can call off computer processor. To test that, I assembled such a testing setup. I am using my old i3 as a processor here. First, I measure the temperature of the processor with quite a powerful radiator and regular thermal grease. On average, the temperature of the processor reached up to 50 degrees Celsius. Now, for submerging this setup into dry water, I have glued one more wall into the aquarium in order to decrease volume of the testing vessel. Because I just have 2 liters of dry water, after placing the motherboard into such a DIY compartment, I wired everything and it was time to fill the compartment with dry water. In a short while, I filled the compartment with 2 liters of this unique liquid. When I turned out the computer submerged into the compartment, I was surprised to see it all work like a charm. Bubbles started coming out of the processor, because the dry water was boiling around the heat spreader block. To check the effectiveness of cooling with dry water, I ran a 50 minute stress test. At first, the temperature of the liquid inside the aquarium was about 30 degrees Celsius. As the test progressed, the processor heated up more and boiling slightly intensified. It was quite interesting to behold. Besides the processor, other computer parts also cooled off in the dry water, for instance such as RAM memory and some transistors. After the test, the temperature settled at 75 degrees Celsius, which points to the fact that the efficiency of my setup is quite low. That is not surprising, as my experimental setup is not equipped nor with a capacitor, neither with a heat exchanger. However, this setup is fitting for demonstration. You can even watch a YouTube videos with such a setup. Nowadays, equipment used for complex calculations is sometimes submerged in dry water for cooling off, because this fluid is almost the best refrigerant and one of the safest ones for electronics. Towards the end of my experiments, the temperature of the dry water in the aquarium settled at 43 degrees Celsius, because excess heat was escaping through the glass walls. After all the experiments, I also decided to check if dry water can be carbonated like regular water. It turns out it can. Carbon dioxide from my siphon dissolves well in dry water, so we can make real dry carbonated water in a few seconds. Unfortunately, we cannot drink it. However, if you consider dry water as fluorocarbon, regular oxygen can also actively dissolve in it. In theory, such an oxygen enriched liquid can be used for liquid breathing, just like in the film The Abyss by James Cameron. Basically, nowadays, dry water is mainly used for extinguishing fire in data centers with expensive equipment. This liquid is still too expensive to be used for cooling off computers commercially. Also, the Chinese manufacturers are beginning to produce this same liquid several times cheaper. That is why commercial use of this liquid for cooling off may be cost efficient in future. So I think that video was useful for you. And if you like it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and also support channel on Patreon, link in the video description.